Welcome to my channel, mother suckers. Hey, I am Eloho, and today we'll be discussing this British Vogue cover that the girls have been tussling over for quite some time, honey. Ever since British Vogue dropped this cover of their all African model representation, the girls have been tussling. Y'all been tussling on Instagram, y'all been tussling on Twitter, and y'all been tussling on YouTube. So let's break this down. Let's discuss this cover. British Vogue captioned the cover on Instagram stating, with a new generation of models in the spotlight, fashion is at last embracing what it is to be truly global. The nine models gracing the cover are representative of an ongoing systemic shift that became more pronounced on the SS22 runways, awash with dark-skinned models whose African heritage stretched from Senegal to Rwanda to South Sudan to Nigeria to Ethiopia. For an industry long criticized for its lack of diversity, as well as for perpetuating beauty standards seen through a Eurocentric lens. This change is momentous. At Funmi Fero talks to some of those redrawing the map in the February issue of British Vogue. See the full story in the new issue on newsstands Tuesday 18th January and click the link in the bio to read in full. So British Vogue drops the cover on Instagram and the comments immediately begin to critique the photo. Someone said, love the cover. Wish the models would be dressed in color, though. Someone else said, all those amazing models represented finally and yet not one wearing natural hair. Really? Someone else said, why isn't why it isn't showing brighter colors and happy mood? What is this darkness? <laughs> and then someone else said, powerful, but the photo is awful. The background is so gloomy and it's not really highlighting their beauty. Sorry, looking at the ladies' IG account, they are not naturally this tone of black. It's actually offensive that this cover is considered as representation. Talk about tone death. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Why did you darken them like this? These are the most gorgeous women on the face of the planet, and this is the worst possible photo of them. The critiques go on and on, but the most consistent critiques were that these are not the model's natural skin tones and that when they shoot African women specifically, they darken their skin tones. Um, another critique was that these hairstyles are not representations of African women's hair and hairstyles. Uh, people said there was bad lighting, it wasn't enough color, and that the overall aesthetic was doom and gloom, and that's not the representation of Africa either. Now, I do want to start by correcting British Vogue. Uh, in their article, they said that some of the models had heritage from Sudan. These models are actually from South Sudan, which is a completely different country from Sudan. So it is important to note exactly where they are from. They are South Sudanese. Now, as someone who has worked in fashion, in front of the camera, behind the camera, on set, modeling, makeup artist, creative directing, I've literally done it all. Um, as someone who has the experience with fashion for about 10 years now, um, I can definitely say that fashion, specifically high fashion, is art. Um, and with art comes varying opinions. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. Your thousand words is different from my thousand words. Um, and so, of course, inevitably, these photos have become super controversial. Um, and I'm assuming that British Vogue knew this, the creative directors, the stylists. You know, when you work in high fashion, you just have to expect pushback. Not everybody's going to understand your vision. Not everybody's going to like your vision. Not everybody's going to approve of your vision, right? Um, so I'm pretty sure that they were prepared for this pushback. Um, I do want to also start by saying that the models seem pretty happy and excited about this opportunity. Opportunity. And I just want to say congratulations to them all. They are so, so freaking gorgeous. Like the melanin in this video is really about to blow y'all minds. Like I just was like going to their Instagrams, just mesmerized. Like, oh my God, y'all is too cute. And so I mean no hate towards the models. If I have any negative opinion, it is towards the creative vision.
I also want to say we have to be careful with our verbiage and our critiques as these are actual human beings behind these photos. I did see some comments of saying, oh, you know, they look ugly, you know, oh, they they made them too black. Like we just have to be very careful with our verbiage, you know, and trying to defend these women. You can come off actually insulting them. So let's get into the darkening of the photos. I saw this thread on Twitter and someone tweeted, by the way, this is what some of the models of the British Vogue cover actually look like. I'm most surprised by Majesty Mar, the edited, they edited her skin the most. The photo shoot just sucked all the warmth and life out of their skin. And these were the photos that were posted from their Instagrams to show that they're not as dark as the cover photo from British Vogue. Someone retweeted that and said, I don't think y'all understand how lighting works. This is also what they look like. And I actually agree with this tweet. Many of these models actually do look that dark. They do have different undertones, but they are very dark. And when you go to their Instagram pictures in natural lighting, like at the beach or hanging out with friends, yes, yes, honey, the melanin is there, it's there. And that's why I said we do have to be careful with critiquing African skin tones because there are people that are literally that dark. No Photoshop, no editing, natural skin tone. Someone then said, except a dude looks like this on the left and white editors make her look like this on the right. So then came the conversation. There were just so many conversations coming out of this one cover photo, but then came the conversation, are these models actually as light as they look in the publications? Are the white editors making them lighter or making them darker? And I was just like, you know what? Nah, <laughs> nah. I don't even want to go down that route. I want to stick to this topic. The creative director in this case is black. Um, so I do want to just stick to this topic. Now, as far as the skin lightening, I've seen a lot of these models in person and they are very dark. I think with this photograph, they wanted the models to look as similar as possible. Um, in this case, yes, they did alter the undertones of many of these models' skin tones. They put black lipstick on them or dark lipstick on them. They put these big dark wigs on them, adding more shadow, right? These big dark clothes, more shadow, and they dimmed the light. That was the creative direction for this video. I mean, sorry, for this photo. I don't know why, but that was the creative direction. I don't know why. I wasn't there. But the high fashion modeling industry does have a habit of taking dark-skinned African women and removing the warmth from their undertones. They do have a habit of that. And, you know, I am going to go ahead and mention that because... I noticed that as, you know, as a model myself, um, I am dark skinned, but I have yellow undertone. So when the flash hits me, I usually photograph lighter than what I am. Or sometimes if the light is too bright out, my undertones will pull through. Um, and I will never forget this photographer saying to me, you know, taking pictures of me and he would look at me and look at his camera and look at me and look at his camera. And he says, wow, like almost like upset or like, mm, this is not what I wanted. But he said, wow, you photograph really light. Um, and I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know what to do about that. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to have to, it's okay. I'll just edit them. And when he edited them, I was actually a lot darker than what I really am. So there is a fetishization. We can do a separate video on that. There is a fetishization element when it comes to African models, specifically South Sudanese models. You know, they are fetishized for their dark skin, their naturally slim and tall physique. They are fetishized. And they're seen more as pieces of art versus human. Uh, but on the other side, European models, they're also fetishized, but they're sexually fetishized. They're seen as, you know, like Barbie or the Playboy bunnies, you know, in a more sexual way. 
In my personal opinion, you know, I was really excited for this all African cover. I would have loved to see the different undertones. I would have loved to see the different undertones. I would have loved to see braids and beads. I even think that if all the models were either smiling or laughing, that would have had more of a positive impact because it's like the clothes and the shadowing, you know, and then they all look so serious or angry or just like no expression. Um, if we would have saw some white teeth, I think the people would have received this a little bit better. But y'all let me know what you thought of this cover down in the comment section. Which side of the tussle are you on? Do you feel like this is beautiful? This is high fashion? This is art? Or do you feel like, uh, 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 this is not a good look for my African sisters. Don't put them out there like that. Put them in color. Put them in natural hairstyles, okay? Put them happily, living happily, smiling, joyful. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comment section. Be sure to like and subscribe, share this video, and I'll see you at the next one.